uh, you guys still haven't hit on a couple of the bigger ones for me. For me, I found it to be a lot of rejection. Does anybody feel that? You know, it's like, uh, did, did anybody feel like, well, I don't know what's going on. I sent out resumes and I don't hear mm -hmm. anything back. You know, what am I, what am I doing wrong? You know, so if that was a big one for me. Um, it's an exciting role for you guys to be looking for a job. Is that something that gets you excited every morning? Sometimes? When you're on a roll, you'll start getting responses. When you're on a roll. Oh, so it's not that we inherently don't like the job search process. It's that maybe we're not as skilled at it that we need to be, that we get the satisfaction. All right, and we're going to hold that thought for a minute. I want to go. Uh, does anybody feel overwhelmed that there's a lot to do? Okay. Uh, so, uh, is there anybody here for whom, show of hands, that, you know, being in transition wasn't their choice, that it was forced upon them? All right. So there's, there's issues there, too. It's like, oh, why was I the lucky one to be selected for this? Or, I have this trauma associated with not being the lucky one, and I think that if I you did, you did bring my notes. <laughs> no, there, there is. There, there, there's a whole grieving process, and actually, when we when we talk a little bit later about what I call the job search funnel, we're going to talk about the grief process. Um, Yeah, so that, that's that's a, a lot of the things. What I would like to now do is take a look at those things that we just talked about. And, then, and how did they make us feel? So the pace things. How, how does that make us feel? Scared. Scared, yes. Stress, maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stress. You know, you don't know what's what's going to happen to you, mm -hmm. you know, are you going to be the homeless person, you know, that's just a lot that could, could happen. How about all the rejection? What does that, what does that do for you? Lack of confidence. Lack of confidence, yeah. So somebody else read the notes too. Yeah, <laughs> lack of confidence, because that's an important element, because you know, when, when you're in a job interview, and you lack confidence, how are they going to perceive you? Mm -hmm. Are they are they going to be able to pick up that you lack that confidence? Mm -hmm. Well, you bet they are. And so it's really important to address this. Uh, uh, let's see. What happens when we don't have that structure? That yes. Sometimes you sleep late. Sleep and you late. just, you know, you take advantage and say, I, I deserve a little break or something like that. You don't work to your optimum. Oh, not performing to optimum. Yes. Not or no goals. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. I, uh, I hope, yeah, that's part of the things that we're going to go over, too. That's really important during the job search to take care of your health. Because you, yes, you have to take care of your health. Um, what about, um, you might feel lonely. Mm -hmm. For me, that was one of the big things. I was like, most of my friends were still gainfully employed. And first of all, they didn't understand what was taking so long, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, like Ron said, you, you gotta explain, you're, you're still not working? It's like, you don't, you just don't know yet. So, there are things that we can do, but there's actually some things that we should have done before. So all the people listening on YouTube, hopefully we're getting to them before they're at the stage where we are, so they can start doing some of the things that we're gonna talk about 
Uh, but the next thing I'd like to do, so, so we're agreed upon that we're not generally not feeling happy with being in transition. Except for Rob, who, you know, there's elements. <laughs> but but the, those are, you know, short and far between, probably. Yeah. All right, so, so we're not feeling good. Our confidence is going down. When I was a softball coach for 14 years, when my team was in the funk, I knew I had to turn it around. I needed them to get a little bit of success, right? Because we can build on success. But if you're constantly getting beat up, you're just going to spiral down. And that's what we want to avoid in, in your job search, right? So we want to do things that are going to keep you guys motivated. Now, we, we've already talked a little bit about, you know, sometimes you feel good. When do you feel good? Yes. When I'm at uh, like the library where there are other people and I feel like I'm a useful member of a working society and I get away from my environment at home where it's easy to feel lonely. So I'm part of a group and then I'll go to the computer and look for jobs on the internet. And even though that's not the best way, at least I feel I did three a day, three job applications a day. So I have a goal and I met it. That's well, I like that you set goals. We'll, we'll talk about that later too because that's important because we talked about the lack of structure right mm -hmm. you got you have to give yourself structure if you don't give yourself structure you're not going to be effective and I, I will tell you a little bit about my history I was a program manager so what I <coughs> my role was to talk with the marketing people get the market research from them and then write instructions for programmers <coughs> so they could code software that we felt would be marketable make, and profitable. So that was my job. So there was a lot, of, I, it was a very busy job. I was working anywhere between, on a good week, 50 <coughs> hours, most weeks, you know, 60 to 80. So it was a, it was a, I went from having so much to do to all of a sudden nothing to do. And I have to tell you, psychologically, that was that was tough for me. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about. We also talked about it being a little bit overwhelmed. What are some of the things that you? What are some of the things you need to do when you're in job transition? Just start. What are some of the things we should do when we're in job transition? Yes. Network. Network. What else? Develop a plan. Come up with a plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. 40 plus, in our, our class, we call it the job search plan. That is very important. Because you know what? Once you write everything down that you have to do, then you can start prioritizing. And once you start prioritizing, you can use your time more effectively. Anything else? Informational interviews. Informational interviews, yeah. Um, what else? I came up, last night when I was doing this, I, I came up with a list. Now, Mary knows this already because she saw the name. <laughs> 54. Oh, wow. I came up with 54 items that you really should be doing. So we can come up with more than three, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, resume. Oh, resume, right. What else? You, did you say resume and cover letter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Um, when I. Um, first got here to this area and I was looking for a job, I discovered that I was doing it all wrong because I've never used a resume to get a job. I knew both principles. Mm -hmm. And oh. so all of a sudden it was just like, I had, I had to learn <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but actually you were probably using a more effective technique. Mm -hmm. 
the networking technique is much better than applying for jobs on the internet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. Um, come on. We, we need that, that juice is running here. What else? Research. 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 Researching more. potential employers. Why is that important? Well, if you, when you're, um, I can think of several things. One is so that you're applying uh, your time in terms of networking and, and actual applications uh, in companies that are going to be a good fit for what you're trying to do. You either fit for your skills and a fit for what it is that you want to do, what, what you want to be part of. Now, yeah. now, building on that, one of the things that I think is important, I'm going to stop right because it's just slowing it down. One of the things I think is important is writing out your, uh, your likes and dislikes, right? And your values. This is very important because really, when we get to talk about the, the pyramid that I went, or I mean the funnel, at the bottom of the funnel, those are job offers, right? And hopefully you're going to get generate more than one job offer. Hopefully you're going to generate multiple job offers. If you're doing, if you're running your jobs, I know some of you are like, no, 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 I just, just anything, anything. I was there, I know. But see, I don't want you to look at the job search as something that you do and then it's over. I want you to look at it as something that you're going to continuously going to work on and improve over time. Because what about, we, we said networking, what, what, do you, what do you network? What's, what, are, what are some of the goals of networking? Hidden job market. Hidden job market, exactly. But if, if I meet somebody here at 40 plus today and never met them before, are they going to be a, a, a valuable resource for me? They could be. Yes. Could be. Could be. But what you what you have to do is you have to sort of make a connection with the person, right? Because if I know that you're looking for a particular type of job, and I know somebody who's hiring in that field, am I going to recommend you if I don't trust you? No, not at all. So really, you have to build trust, right? And how do you build trust when you're when you're unemployed? Somebody said it earlier. You can volunteer, right? We want to volunteer. We want to get out there and volunteer. And these are people who are going to see you in action, right? And then if they see you in action, if they have a common bond with you because they're volunteering for the same organization, then you're going to bond with them. And so they're, they're, they're a weak uh, connections and they're stronger connections. <coughs> so again, somebody said LinkedIn. What, what's, does anybody know the kind of like the magic number for LinkedIn? How many, how many are you trying to close in on? Connections, you mean? Connections. Yeah, over 500? Over 500. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. let's say we meet 20 a week. It's going to take us a while, right, to build that up. Mm -hmm. Especially if we want to build meaningful connections, right? And we're going to talk about meaningful connections a little bit later, but basically it, it's, you know, somebody that, for example, uh, Aaron, he volunteers, and he and I work on our grant writing team together. And I can tell you, if Aaron asked me for a recommendation, I can tell the person, well, you know, I work with Aaron, we, we, we work on grant writing together, and I will tell you, he came up with some fantastic ideas. He came up with, for example, how we wanted to limit 
the number of options in our survey so that we didn't have distorted information. Uh, he came up with, the, the thing that was most impressive to, uh, for me was one day we had a speaker come in here and he said, hey John, shouldn't, shouldn't we ask him to review our list of questions to get his opinion? I said, that's fantastic. That's, that's someone who took initiative. Now, if I am talking to somebody, if I'm a reference for somebody, and I can give specific examples like that, is that more or less persuasive than I say, yeah, yeah, I, I know Aaron. Yeah, he's an okay guy. Yeah, I think he, he'll probably work okay. No, I mean, that's not nearly as persuasive as giving an example of when he took initiative, give an example of some of the good work he's done. Uh, and I'm also more enthusiastic when I'm saying this, right? Because I can, you want people that you are using in your network to be enthusiastic about you, right? I know it's, it's early, I know <laughs> it's hot, but we can at least all agree on that. Right? Enthusiastically <laughs> positive. Enthusiastic, <laughs> well, that's, that's true. That's very true. Um, there's got to be some more. What else we got to do? What else? We're missing some big ones. Yes. Uh, usually in my past career, uh, when I worked all the time, I would target the hiring manager and the organization that I wanted to work for, and I'd actually call them directly. And I did get jobs that way, and even the current part-time job I got that way. Yeah. Because I circumvented HR and also mm -hmm. all the internet. All the, in other words, instead of being the 80% of the people competing for 20% of the jobs, you were the only person competing for something that wasn't published yet? Is that a better odd? Yeah. Now, a lot of people, now, does anybody, do we all like to network? Who likes to network? Let's show hands. Ron, couple, William, Tom, Tom is up there. Some, right? We like to network. If you, I'm not seeing the overwhelming majority. I would love to see everyone go, ooh, ooh, yes, I love it, Mr. Carter. You know, that's that's the thing, that's my thing. But we're not. Why is that? Why, why don't, yes? Because it's cute when you're younger, but when you're older, it's like you're begging in a way, for, from my standpoint. Because you should, by, my feeling is you should have a career by now. You know what I'm saying? When you're younger, it's kind of like, oh, I'll help this young person, you know? That's how it was with me anyway. Okay, so it's, it's but that's an important thing. It's your perception. See, what you need to realize is that, you know, 56% of us are going to find ourselves in at least one, many of us in multiple transitions from the time of 40 and over. And, and guess what? That number's going up. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not a shrinking number. And that's kind of that's kind of a scary mm -hmm. thought too, right? But I don't want you feeling like you're begging. So there there, there are things that we can do to get away with, from that. So, uh, you should, yes, well, sir. I'd, I'd like to make a comment on that. We are coming from a historical background where people used to have one career mm -hmm. in their entire That's lives. True. That's, right. That's, That's right. changing, yeah. and that opens yeah. possibilities for everybody. Yeah. It, there you go, optimistic. How many people, because it's on my list, listen to motivational speakers when they're in transition? All right, that's good. I, I, I want to see everybody up there, but I'm glad that I saw about half of the people raise That was one of the things that got Tony Robbins, and I felt like connected to him by the end. You know, because I was listening to him, and there were a lot of other people that I said, I need, you know, I need purpose, right? Because here I am sitting at home, and my wife would come back from work, and, and Still no job. No. <laughs> Still no job. Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos on a searching lot. for work. Yeah. Some, some are good. I've seen about five or so. Yeah. 
Some are good. Oh, well, yeah. Some, some mm, less than good. Yes. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of thoughts. Uh, the first on uh, motivational speakers, uh, I've got a lot of um, <coughs> enthusiasm and optimism uh, when I talk to other people in 40 plus who are looking for their next career success and to hear their stories is very inspirational to me. Um, Secondly, about, I think uh, people in this country anyway, and others as well probably, understand how much the culture of the work world has changed over the decades. Uh, when I first uh, got out of high school and could type 103 words a minute on a typewriter, I had people calling me at the various law firms at which I was employed, recruiters trying to get me to join another law firm. Nowadays, people are typing on their telephones. Back then, it was the only predominantly female uh, secretaries who could type. So the whole culture has changed, and I have found it to be an exciting, albeit somewhat scary, uh, proposition to be out looking for my next uh, career challenge uh, at age 70. But I'm reminded uh, of the slogan that the Marine Corps was uh, saying years ago, and they were trying to recruit at that time, and they were saying, we're looking for a few good men. I'm just I'm one woman looking for one job. And that, knowing that and repeating that to myself has been very helpful for me. I'm not looking. That's all I'm looking for. Right. Just one. It only takes one. It only right? takes one. And that one can happen at any time. And one of my inspirations is sitting back in the corner there. I remember hearing his story. He said the best job of his life he got it when he was age 66. And I'm like, wow. So if he can do it at 66, I should be able to do it at, you know, um, you know 49, I think that was at the time, 48, somewhere around there. I should be able to do it, you know? And, but it was that inspiration, you're right, seeing success stories. We had a recent graduate who, uh, not only found a job within, I think, uh, I think it was within two months of taking the course, but the job paid him more than what he was making prior to the course. Now those are the people that you want to be networking with, right? Because they're going to places. And we've been very fortunate in 40 plus that we have a lot of talented people who go through our program. And I can tell you, one of the reasons why I volunteered initially after taking the class is because I realized that there were a lot of people who were coming through this program and I wanted to network with every single one of them. And because this was the way I was going to, that was my strategy for organically growing my network. And I knew that we had a common bond because we all had taken the class together and we'd all had a shared experience and I knew that was going to really help me out. So that was one of my strategies when I was coming out. Because the first time, you know, I was uh, in transition, I had been at the previous company for 19 and a half years. So that was, didn't know a whole lot, you know. Lot had, all the rules had changed, by the way, in the 19 and a half years. All the rules mm -hmm. had changed. Uh, anybody else in, had been, last job they had for a long time? Yeah, 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 the rules change on you. Uh, at any rate, so I knew that I had to, I had to start building what I call the infrastructure for success. You know, I, I needed to, I knew by reading some of the publications, because reading was another one of the things that you should be doing. Reading about the economy, reading about where, who is, who does have jobs? 
you know, those certain industries are still growing. And if you're looking in those industries, you're going to be 10 times more likely. Now, this might sound crazy, but I watched Bad Money every single night when I was uh, in transition. Uh, I said, because it gave me this information that I wanted, but who's growing? And if I saw a company that was local that Kramer liked, well, that, that went on my list real quick. So, I mean, some people can't take the, you know, the Kramer, but, you know, but, you know, for me, that was, that was something that really helped me. Um, somebody else said that they felt like during the job transition, they were deteriorating their skills. Well, there's a lot of there are a lot of courses now, where a lot of certifications you can get now. So that's another thing that when you look when you do your job search plan, you got to look at are there any things that will make me more marketable. If you're looking through, um, I know Ron, you were in software development, right? Yes. And there are certain certifications I'm sure that you saw over and over and over. Yes, definitely, yes. And can you give us just one of them? Uh, the, uh, well, if, if you were particularly the project management and the project management certification was a big one, but the, the technical end we had uh, certif uh, almost any popular language had a certification in Java, certification in uh, .NET, um, actually, Microsoft has a whole series of certification for their development product, products. Uh, you can get certified as, a, as a, knowing the SQL uh, database language. Um, well, any, anything that had it, it was popular in the technical world had a certification. It had a certification that was a go-to certification that you would you would want to get. And now, now the problem is. Do we have the money to pay for all these certifications in this retour? Maybe, maybe not after a year, but maybe at the beginning of it, we had a little bit more money. So, yeah. So it gets, so we can see that it gets harder and harder the longer that you're in transition. Yes. One of my uh, many forty-plus uh, success uh, stories occurred um, with my younger sister, who is just uh, turned Medicare age back in May. She's 65 now. A couple years ago, I took her resume and at her prompting, I was using the skills I learned in the 40 plus class I've taken um, and crafted it. She wanted a one page resume uh, by way of background, she has a high school education from a local school, and then she's got a nurse's certificate to be a licensed practical nurse in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I took her resume, edited it down to one page, and that resume was uh, distributed as resumes customarily are. Many people apparently saw the resume. Two years later, she gets a telephone call at random out of the proverbial clear blue sky from a woman who had her current resume that I had written. And this woman owns a teaching school to teach people how to become licensed practical nurses. She looked at my sister's one-page resume with the only educational experience being high school and her nurses training in Virginia and made her an offer over the telephone to teach for her at her nursing school. My sister is still doing that to this day. So you never know what life has in store for you. You never know. But, and that's but you, a, have that's to put, you have to you have to put pen to paper, right? Mm -hmm. She got word out that she would, two years later, you said. But you don't necessarily need the so-called 
advanced accreditations. She had basically a high school education and then a, the requisite nurses training on top of that. But she didn't have any college degree and still doesn't. Yeah, and, and but I, I'm sure if you took the 40 plus, you said you took the 40 plus class. Mm -hmm. So you you probably were putting in success bites for her bullet points versus job description. You know, I did this, I did that. You were saying this was the result of my action because that's gonna that's gonna help you a lot more. And that's that's one of the keys that we teach in the classes. When you're doing your bullet points, you need to have. Six, Things that you accomplish on the job, just not what, just not the day-to-day -day task, but what you actually accomplish. Because people nowadays, they don't care about what you did; they care about how well you did it, and that's the key. All right, so I'm going to just give you. Um, Mary, were you a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, and I just sort of think, I, I thought, you know, you're focusing on speaking, and so I just wanted to scribe for you, so Tom gave me permission to do that. I mean, look how nice that is. You, you could never read my writing. <laughs> yes, Rob. Um, just on the on the list here, there's, a, there's a, a couple that people mentioned, I think, and, um, and then maybe one more that popped in my head. I'm not sure whether it's sort of subsumed, but one of them is so it is practicing and and practicing your interview skills, right? Uh, and, and I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to that, but it also sort of fits in on its own category. It goes with other. It, it was on my list. Another one is um, understanding and and defining what your brand is and then working to develop that. Awesome. And then the other one that somebody else mentioned was self-care, so budgeting in time for exercise or sleep, sleep or all those things that go into that. So. And when you're working 60 to 80 hours, you kind of run a sleep deficit. And so one of the things that I need to do was rebuild myself because I was pretty worn out. I didn't. I had no idea how worn out that job, what toll that job it took on me. Except now, uh, I remember three years after losing that job, I ran into a former coworker who was still there, and I swear he aged like five years in the three years, and I was like, holy moly. And he doesn't even realize it, right? And, and he probably said, you look great, because you are resting, hopefully. Well, he, he actually did. He's a nice guy. He did say I was looking really good. So I was, that made me feel pretty good. But you're right, he did. Because I started taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And that, but that also, you know, when we were talking about values later, or earlier, or that before, it was one of those things I said, it's important for me that I not have a job where I do that to my body again. Because that was, that was more, I didn't realize the effects it was having on me until I got to step away from it. And then, and that was actually, it was huge for me. Because, you know, you might have to, to accept a job that you're not paying as much, getting as much paid for. But for me, that didn't matter as much as maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Yes. Um, I uh, went through this process of healing from my former job. I um, and that's it. when you asked, you know, how we felt about the transition. The first several months, I was totally fine with it, you know, because I was going through this healing process. So, yeah. When we get to the final, you will find out that you did the. Ex what I recommend is the absolute for, oh, by the way, I forgot to have a disclaimer. The views expressed here today are those of John Wilhelm and not necessarily 40 plus or more. <laughs> Sorry, forgot to mention that. Yes, Chris. Yeah, John, I think one thing, you know, we talked about some of the challenges that we face as we go through transition. I think one of the benefits that we have with the experience, and you mentioned it, in one of the dialogues earlier is 
really knowing at this stage in our life what we like to do and what we don't like to do. And I, I would suggest that's not a trivial issue. I know it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. When I, I look back. Whole, I spent days working on that. Right, I, I did too. When I look back over, you know, my 30 year career and what I've done and what I like to do and what I don't like to do, you know, ideally we'll all have the option to gravitate more toward what we like to do, then, you know, obviously not everything we do in a job is gonna be something that we love to do, but there are certain ways that you can sort of navigate your way to to those areas. And that was that was big for me because, you know, some of the jobs I've had in the past were gotten through networking and they were roles that on the surface looked okay and then you got into them and you realized, geez, this is not really what my passion is and it's a major part of the job. So I think one of the benefits we have is really understanding at this stage in our life what we really like to do and what we don't like to do and hopefully have the option of that. Well, even if you don't have the option at first, one of the things that was interesting to me is when the board came to me and said, John, do you want to be executive director at 40 plus? And I said, well, I'm going to have to think about this. Um, doesn't pay anything. Um, and probably a lot of hours. And I said, well, I first turned down and said no. But then after a few months, I realized something. I revisited my likes and dislikes. And one of the things that was on my like was, was I love being the coach. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a coach for 14 years, and I love coming up with the game plan. And so I said, geez, you know, if I can do that now for an organization that can really benefit from that, and help a lot of people who I know could really benefit from, from that leadership. And so, I can't remember how long I made the work for the way, but I think it was like, Two, two or three months later, I went back and said, I'll do it, I'll do it. Because uh, nobody else has stepped up. And I said, well, there's gonna be some fun things that I can do for this. And one of them for me was that game plan mentality. And I'm working on, as we speak, I'm working on my 90 day plan for 40 plus on how I'm gonna take us to the next level. And so that's exciting for me. And that got me back to the uh, 60 to 80 hour work week type of mentality without the hours. <laughs> so it was like kind of nice to, to be able to do that application. But it was because I had done that likes and dislikes, um, strengths and weaknesses. That's another one you want to do, strengths and weaknesses. We tend to like, and what you'll find is when you do that, you tend to like to do things that you, that you do well. And so, what I love watching is when the class comes through, and Chris just graduated from the class, Aaron just graduated from the class. Everybody else is taking a break, because <laughs> it's a brutal class. But you, you take the class, and I love to see the confidence level increase from the beginning to the end because they now they know you know what they're how they're going to be spending their time. And one of the things I want to do, my goodness, how beautiful is this? I'm, I'm, if, if I were you, I would take a picture of this yeah. before you leave because there's no handouts. So, uh, Mary, thank you so much. I just wanted you to be able to focus on. Oh, I appreciate. It. Oh my gosh, this is. This is I think after the years of penmanship, but we'll, we'll, put, we'll let you after class, everybody can take pictures, we'll all take pictures. Uh, one of the things I want to do, because, you know, we, many of you said that it's a structure, and they don't know how to spend their time. And we, we came up, literally last night I came up with 54 items that you should be doing when you're on the job search. Um, thank you notes, we didn't mention that. You should be writing thank you notes. Uh, your elevator pitch, you, mm -hmm. which we call 30 second teammate 
in the class. You need to be able to, when you're out meeting someone, you need to be able to express certain things. One, that you're in the job market. Two, what you're looking for. And, 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 and you need to do this in a way that people are going to be engaged. Now, uh, I'm very proud of my, my teammate. I've worked I, on Chris's class. I finally went over the 100th revision of my teammate, 32nd teammate. That was just my 32nd teammate. So when I say this is an ongoing process, and some of those changes were just one word. Sometimes it was key ideas. There's one point in my teammate where I said, if you know anyone pa facing an important financial decision, please introduce us. And I realized that I was cutting out so many people. So I, I changed it to, if you know, if there's anyone you care about, anyone that you want to succeed, you want to have succeed financially, please introduce us. And then that made it much more encompassing, right? It's, it's really hard for somebody to come up with somebody who uh, is facing an important financial decision. They might know somebody who's buying a house or you know, refinancing or something. Or refinancing or something. <laughs> uh, Shoring up your personal finances? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd make sure Mary was still awake here. Um, you know, you, you, but you need to be able to articulate that in a way that people are going to remember you. Because if they meet, my goal when I was writing my teammate was if I, if somebody met 20 people, I wanted to be the one person they remember. And that takes a lot of time. Now, again, part of the, the beat up part of the, uh, the job search is that a lot of us don't have this infrastructure in place, right? I didn't have it in place three years ago, four years ago, but now I do have it in place. So now, if I'm looking for the next job, all of this is already ready for me. So if I can conduct a much more efficient job search, because I already have the success fights for my resume. I already have a whole lot that I know I've done, I've gone through, and by the way, even four years later, it was such a horrific experience for me to, to be in transition for that long, 14 months, that there's not, a, uh, there's not a single month where I don't do something on my job search, whether it's think of another success bite or you know, refine an answer to a challenging interview question. Still doing it because I know that at age 53, there's going to be many more opportunities down the road to use it. Because now the typical jobs you're going to be at are only going to be like a year and a half, three years, something like that. So that i got a few more cycles. It's all reusable stuff. All right, 30 second pitch. Yes, uh, I'm just going to go down. We said uh, personal finance. Actually, yes. Yes, personal finance are important as well. Uh, but I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, uh, I came here last fall from a different country, and my wife and I both we were unemployed. And uh, so I went to a place uh, in Northern Virginia. There is an institution. The name is uh, Skills Source. I don't know if you have ever heard about it. So she is a lawyer from a different country. Uh, for she cannot practice. So she kind of practice uh, as a uh, lawyer um, here in the United States because she needs to take the bar and everything. Right, right. But she said, okay, maybe I can be a volunteer or if I can join a, a, a firm as a volunteer. So what this, uh, this is like a, a triangle. So a, a skill source it started providing her with uh, a stipend. It's the first time that I've seen here. Skill search or source? A skill source, source in Northern Virginia. So, so what she did is she, she got into a three three month program, as a, like an internship, but without pay. Is the minimum is the minimum minimum like seven fifty per hour? Uh -huh. But that allowed her to to 
uh, get this hidden market in the same law firm, and she applied to two jobs, and in the second job, she got that job, and she started on over the fifth. Oh, uh, congratulations. Yes, yes. So the thing is, uh, okay, it's not a uh, big salary, but for us, it's, it's a blessing, because I was paying the market rate the insurance for the house, for the entire family, right. and she just needs to pay 100 bucks for all of us. And the oh, wow. yeah, it's it's about the silver. That's worth it alone, right? Yeah. yeah. So I told her, don't su don't see only the figure for the salary, right. right. but this has a value as well. I think for me it's like twenty thousand euro. I think. Oh wow. Yes, because it's not the silver; it's the gold one, a EPO. Um. You can shoot your doctor, and and also she had like fifteen days of vacation and all all the benefits, and life insurance as well. So I said, yeah, of course. So now, uh, maybe this is good because, as you said, we can volunteer for, and then that can open up the gate. For you can, and, and now there's one thing I want to tell you about volunteering. I don't want you volunteering to the exclusion mm -hmm. of conducting your job search. It, it needs to be a part of the overall plan. As much as I would want you off, I mean, 40 hours a week here at 40 plus, I know that, you know, you need to, your primary goal is to find a job. So your volunteerism is, the purpose of that is to get you known by other people. Let other people see how well you work. And so usually my, my rule of thumb is you probably shouldn't be volunteering more than say eight to, to 10 hours a week, you know. Um, yeah. Depending on how many, how serious you take your job search. By the way, at one point I woke up, you know, uh, and it was actually after the 40 plus class, and I said, you know what, I was working, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week for somebody else. It's time to get serious. And then I started keeping track of my time, and I made sure that I worked at least 50 hours a week on the job search. And if you're doing that kind of effort, you will find a job a lot faster. Yes. So, and, and in my case, you know, I haven't been able to find a job, but I, yeah. uh, but I found, uh, I joined a group, and Ron, uh, you know this group, the name of the group is Leaders in Energy, because I have uh, my experience with my latest employer was in the energy sector. Okay. So Leaders in Energy is um, is here in this area, and I want to invite you all uh, to an, an August 22nd. They are going to have a green job forum, a job fair. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want me to provide the details here, or maybe I can provide to you guys. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. It's the best way, whatever you do. Yeah. 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 Uh, so from 4.30 to 9 p.m., and they're going to have pizzas and beverage. And, this is uh, a guy that you want to see, you want to see Fred. Is a, is or or maybe Ron, Ron, Ron Fred and Ron, they'll be able to, to post on the website, right? Oh, yeah. That would yeah. be oh, great. It's only it's this Thursday, so maybe if you release this today, it's going to be good for people. Okay. okay. So I try, you know, for me, what I, my experience in, with this organization, I joined them at the beginning of the year. Um, I am attending more uh, events in this topic, and I am, I am meeting more and more people. So this is good as well. So if you, you, you interact with people, you expand your network, and, it's, it's very, and you have fun as well. You, you are should also be joining some meetups. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I um, signed up for two in September, and uh, just so I could see if I could be in a few with the same place. Do we actually have No, we no, no, are connected with what I want to do. Exactly. Yeah. It, you know, and, and be strategic. Well, you don't even necessarily have to be strategic. It's like if you're an outgoing person and you know you 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 want to meet people and you want to make sure that they know that you're currently looking. It's, it shouldn't be a secret. There's no there's no shame in being in transition. If they're not in transition now, they will be in transition at some point. And so and what you want is you want that person to come to you as the expert because then, again, that's how you strengthen your network. If 
Do you do favors for people? Ken Shopman, when I came to 40 plus uh, and sitting where you guys are, Ken Shopman was the guy that I learned networking from. I just loved his approach. He would, he came up to me and said, hello, I'm Ken Shopman, and you are? And I said, oh, I'm John Wilhelm. He said, what are you looking for? And he took an interest in me. And that was the way he differentiated himself. He's on the board now. And, but, you know, it was a great way for me to open up. He drew it up. And it wasn't until months later I realized he was in transition too. And so I was like, oh, wow. And he had, uh, he has a story. Did, did you say he's, he's in for next week? Yeah, yeah. He's in. So I won't share his story because he'll be here next week. Uh, you can hear a story. It's a, it's a, it's a great story inspirational story so and and there will be others uh, there so at any rate uh, let's see just about John, we talk, talk, yeah. about networking can I add yeah. something because you made a point um, and someone said that they dislike networking and it was uh, your Ken story that, that turned around for me because I didn't like networking either I thought I had to go out and impress these people and they might be useful to me and that's what I was doing wrong is like having meeting people and thinking how how will you be useful to me is an awful feeling. And instead it was more like go uh, tell a little bit about myself, learn a little about them and how think how you know what have I heard or seen that would maybe be useful to this person. Down the road. And then you're not feeling like you're begging. Mm -hmm. Again, we, we go back exactly. to those <coughs> there were a list of seven things that I, I had that you know why we don't like the job search and you know if you take that approach you're not feeling like you're begging you are you're like i'm helping them they and let me tell you if you find someone a job they're going to feel they're going to want to help you they're going to want to reciprocate <coughs> and that's really a strong memory yesterday i wanted to follow up on that i had informational interview last summer with a woman and one of my volunteer activities is I sing in a choir so this is a huge network of you know a polyglot of people and this woman is uh, a PhD from Harvard and a specialist in an area studies not my area but I had coffee with her and she connected me with two job opportunities on a board that she serves on and I decided they were not what I wanted at that point, but I see her every week in rehearsal. And so when I had to go and speak for money in Michigan in April, um, in, um, I was invited to give a lecture. Um, and I called on her because of her area studies that I was gonna be sitting in in a classroom at a small college. And she said to me, she said, you know, I'm still figuring out what I want to do when I grow up. And I thought that was a very strong statement. Here she is, she's published many books and she's, you know, sort of quasi-retired and volunteering, helping write resumes for people in, um, in huge, deeply, deeply vulnerable transitions. And so you just never know, you know, where that reciprocity is going to come in. You never know. And you also never know it may be that you meet somebody and that person doesn't have a job, but they know somebody that you should meet. It's those second and third level connections. And that's why LinkedIn was so successful because it allows you to connect with many people and, and get the word out there. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, it's one very worthwhile thing to do. Um, let's see, I want to go really. Hey, John, can yes. I just add something? Um, a few, uh, several months ago, I was in a training class. I met someone, uh, just about the networking um, yeah. the benefits. I met someone in the class, and I, and we, you know, I got to know her somewhat. And I, you know, and I, I found out she was she does some public speaking. So I, I introduced her to a number of different groups, including Forty Plus. She's spoken here twice, uh, but she's she's gotten like I flew my introductions four or five speaking engagements, and. Um, a few days ago, she sent me an email saying, you know, she's how grateful she is for the connections I gave her, and then she follows up, how can I help you? So, there's an opportunity for me to get help from someone, 
but all I did was help her out. I didn't I didn't go begging for help, and now she she wants to turn around and, and, and return the favor. You know, and in giving is that we receive. You know, we we feel much better when we help someone, and so you will turbocharge your networking efficiency if you go out there and help other people and then because then you're going to have much stronger connections uh, one of the things we, we talked about it briefly was set goals but I set activity goals so what you have to realize is when you're in transition you, you really have a job but you just don't know it and your job is you're a salesperson selling your services and so one of the things I want you doing is I want you also taking or beefing up you we have YouTube we have all sort of ways but I want you to work through the sales process because that's going to help you market yourself and that's very important that's a very useful one of those things on my list of 54 that a lot of people don't do and I want to make sure you all are aware of it. Yes. Okay. So, do you have like a script or you know what what would help me is like if you had something that you wanted to touch on, if you're meeting someone who could hire you or you want could help you, because I belong to three volunteer organizations and there was one where I was asked to do something like an elevator pitch, like how could I help them? Cause, and I had tr I struggled with that because I wasn't sure what it was I could do. You know how do you how do you um, reduce all the skills you have and experience into what you said was three minutes or one minute or something like that? 30 seconds. Oh, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. <laughs> how do you do that? You know, like, well, if you had a script that would help me, like, how do you, not fill in the details, but, you know, what I mean, like, what do you cover? And obviously you have to be enthusiastic well, and look what, right. What I would recommend for you in all seriousness okay. is take the class. Okay. These two guys will okay. tell you that we practice okay. the teammate. Oh, yeah, see Tom afterwards. See right, him. right. Let me just make a comment on that a quick way to define a little right. 30 minute. Uh, a teammate, tell me about yourself is, a, is what a teammate is. I am, I can, I want. Okay, thank okay. you. And what you, you know, the I am, but I can should relate to what. You know the company is you're talking to yes. or the person Skills. you're talking to uh -huh. so they can relate you know mm -hmm. and then i want to okay. be able to love them. Thank so you. just a very quick Thanks. form Thank but you, you. you're gonna again it's your researching somebody mentioned research i think it was rough right researching companies you need to know what their needs are mm -hmm. and there's going to be stuff on their website but that's not going to be the divisional stuff you know the where you're going to be working so that's where you do your informational interview and networking to get to those people so that you can meet some people before you go into an interview so you understand a lot of the things so that when you get there you are they're only going to hire one person those numbers aren't real promising <laughs> so you need to position yourself so you are that one person and so, and, and there's a lot of things that you can do, but it, it's a lot of work. Like I said, I have a list of 54 items that I do and did, because uh, I'm, again, I'm constantly improving. I'm constantly working on my 30 second email. I'm constantly working on, you know, answers to my challenging interview questions. And so it's not something that, it, it's not a skill that you're gonna wanna take the class and forget about. It's something you wanna take the class and these two guys, they're just starting their journey. They, they think, ooh, I'm finally out of the class. But they, they still got a lot of work to do. But at least they know what they're doing now. And now they can use their time efficiently. And that's gonna, that's gonna speed up. We're running a little low on time. One of the things I want to, I'm just gonna go through here. I would set activity goals. Yeah, this is really important. When you're in sales, they want to know how many dials you make a week. And so I said, wow, that's an interesting concept. If they're doing this, maybe I should be doing this too. And they want to know how many, and this is why my first job, I, or my first time in transition, I got one job offer 
But the second time I had four job offers in six weeks because I knew that I had to be making dials and reaching out to people. And again, not in a way that felt, I felt like I was begging, but in a way that I was you know, touching base with them, asking them, hey, what are you up to? And then they're going to reciprocate. Well, what are you up to? Well, I'm actually in job transition right now. Uh, and so, and when you ask for somebody, you know, can you help me? You don't say, yeah, I'm looking for a job, can you help me? That's not specific. You say, do you happen to know anybody who works at XYZ Corp? You know, you want to make your ask very specific so you don't overwhelm the person and then what you're doing is you're contacting so many people and you're moving over so that Frank can get off. So you're, 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 you have all these irons out there and each person is moving you incrementally closer and, and then you put enough of these out there and you're going to find a job. Now, one of the things I talked about, and I, I need Mary more than ever right now. <laughs> Mary, can you draw a funnel for me? A funnel? A funnel. Sure. Because this is this is really important. In my three and a half years. Inverted triangle is what you mean, right? A funnel? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little, yeah. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to kind of narrow because, you know, towards more? the end. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. Now, this is what I call the job search funnel, and it's really important when you find yourself um, in transition. I find that in my three and a half years of working at Forty Plus, that there are certain things. It, the sequence is really important. Okay. At the very top. And, and again, I'm a financial advisor, so but this is really important. The absolute first thing you need to do is find out. You you need to get medical insurance. It might be Cobra. It might be from your spouse. It might be from one of the exchanges. But you need to get insurance. That's very important because it can wipe you out if you happen to become ill and you don't and that can wipe out all of your financial you know all of the savings you have I've seen it I've seen it it was one of the saddest appointments I was ever on I saw this couple and uh, he was in his early 70s she was in her mid 60s and I'm meeting with them going over their assets and they had nothing and the guy said, look, I want you to understand, we used to save 10% for years and years and years. But then my wife got a chronic illness, and his insurance was a straight 80-20 plan. And as they were trying to diagnose his wife, the expenses just got so big, it wiped out literally all their assets. So that's the that's the one, that's the absolute first thing I want you to do. I stuck at the word adequate as well. Yeah, adequate is very important. I, don't go cheap here. This is something that can wipe you out. Now, what are some of the other things that are up here? I want you to also take a look at your, your assets and your liabilities. You need to, and your cash flow, because you need to know how long you can survive in your transition. I want you to start slashing expenses. Yeah. That's that's really important because you're you're off. I don't want I don't want um, your time in transition to be too comfortable because if for me if, if you cut cable out, you know, I, I tell a story of, in, on day H where um, I called somebody who was in transition and on my lunch break, which was like about uh, yeah, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I heard this music. I, I, I said, is that the television? 
for the radio. And she goes, oh, it's television. I said, what, what are you watching? She goes, Green Acres. <laughs> I, I, again, I'm working 60 to 80 hours a week. And I call up my friend who's in transition. And this was before I was in transition, right? I was one of the people who didn't really understand what it means. I now real I, I'm embarrassed of what I did, but I'm going to share it with you because you need to know this is normal. I laid into her. I gave her the biggest dose of tough love that you have ever heard. I said, if the best use of your time during business hours is watching reruns of Green Acres, I can't help you. I can't refer you to anybody because you don't get it. And, and she was like, whoa, whoa, you know? And I said, your job when you're in transition is to find a job, and you're either serious or you're not. And I said, watching Green Acres? I said, you can watch Green Acres, eight o'clock at night, but don't watch it when you have a prime time that you should be calling on people and asking them and networking. So anyway, that was some tough love. What I real, really realized is going to get us down to the next thing that I want you to do. Once you, particularly if you lost your job, you have to go through the grieving process. And you're not going to, you're not going to do your job search for any good if you're bitter or if you are, are uh, angry or in any way. It's going to come through in your interview answers. So make sure that you take care of your mental health. Make sure you work through those issues. And that's really high up on there. I, again, these are the first things that you need to work on. And then some of these things you can work on concurrently. But you want to make sure that you work on your mental health. Again, caught up on sleep. I, I did exercise. I lost weight. I want to make sure I was tough because it's a it's a tough process to go through the job search. But these things will pay benefits that you can't imagine. Now, the next level, after I've taken care of this, you know, my finances and my mental health, then I want in, in physical health, then I want you to start working on uh, those things that are going to help you land a job. And what, what's the first thing most people work on? Why is that? Is this a new business card? Let's we're sorry. Because we're all of a certain age. I mean that it sounds flippant, but what yeah. Alright, so here's what I want you to do. We talked earlier about strengths, weaknesses, likes and dislikes, values. I want you to do all these sort of analysis things. I want you calling up your former bosses. Saying, you know, remember when we worked together? <laughs> Some might say yes, some might say no. But if they said no, they're not a reference for you, right? But if they remembered you, and you start talking about things that you did together, it's going to help you remember some of your success bites, some of those things that you did well when you were at that company. Plus, they know that you're now looking. And if they hired you once, they're much more likely to hire you again. You might be, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're available again. I need you. So reach out to your former bosses. That's one of the things I did. In my case, she was now retired, so that was kind of a bummer. But I was happy for her. But you know, you you do this, and you're going to network. It's going to open up opportunities. Uh, exchange, yeah, go uh, call. Oh, former bosses, yeah. And I want you to get a good idea of the value that you brought to these companies. And we typically, in the class, we te teach problem solutions results. Uh, these are what we call success bites. And it's important to start here and not your resume, because these success bites are the basis for 
your teammate, your elevator pitch, they're the basis for your tough interview question, they're the basis for your resume. And if you start here, then it's a much more it's much more efficient use of your time. Then once you have a list of these success bites, and I know people think I'm crazy, I say you need to get about 50 success bites. And you're like, I have I haven't done 50 great things in my entire life. But you know what? That's that's where you're going to volunteer your volunteer activities here at 40 plus. That's the first thing I ask you when you you want to volunteer. I said, look, what would make you marketable? And then I'm going to try. It. Can I always find something for somebody to do right then and there? No. Sometimes it have to it takes a while. But I'm going to find something because I want you to be able to add to the success bites because I know that's the basis of your resume and all these other things that you're going to be doing. Then, after you have these success bites, then I want you to start working on your resume and your, you know, your teammate, these sort of things. Again, we do we walk you through all of this in in the class so you know how to do these things. But one of the things that I was yeah, we're going to do it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, start retooling, right? Start retooling, but, and, and you know, in this second tranche, um, there's also things such as you know taking those courses that you need to take. You know, I want you getting yourself ready so that you can add those certifications. But then, you know, you're going to start on those typical pieces of what you would t typically think, the resume, the, uh, the teammate, the uh, um, cover letters, and these sort of things. The administrative part. The administrative part. Um, I think if you follow... Your files, your files of contacts. Fi wow. <laughs> Jeez. Files of contacts. One of the things on my list of 54 things I didn't get to was, was actually I create I created a spreadsheet and every single person that I contacted I wanted to I had their name down and what I discussed and then um, I would periodically give them updates because you know they might think oh he must already have a job. But clearly, after a year, I still didn't have a job. So it was important to reach out to them again. And I'm like, hey, I'm still on transition. Um, and of course, then they're wondering, why am I being so inefficient? But again, it was because I didn't know the order. I didn't know how to do certain things. But I think if you follow this, this is going to go, this is going to get you a long way. So you're going to be really efficient if you start working on your success plans. And again, you're going to do your success bites. How do you do your success bites? You talk with people who know you. And you're engaging in a conversation. And um, if you call somebody out, one of your friends, and you say, what would you say my strengths are? And that's where you're going to start the conversation. And they're going to give you, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> why are you asking? Well, I'm in job transition. So I didn't call them to tell them I'm in job transit, but the message is out. See how subtle it is? Yes. Okay, when you look at your references for other jobs, you can get some idea also, like people who know oh, you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Your, your references, you want to keep your references up to date. Even more importantly, when I, when I called somebody up for a reference, I wouldn't just say, hey, would you be a reference? I engage in a conversation with them about when we work together, those things that they like. And then I followed it up with an email and and I identified, again, because I had already gone through this success by thing, I identified a few of the success bites for them in an email follow-up, thanking them for agreeing to be a reference and reminding them of some of those things. It was in writing. Now when somebody called them up, they knew what to say. I made their job really easier. I didn't feel like I was begging because 
it's all right there. I did all the work for them. And now, again, this is a lot of work. This is why I said being unemployed is a full-time job. You know, it's at least a 30 to 32 hour a week job. And then I want you to supplement that with, with uh, you know, networking and volunteering. Uh, to any questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you any no, questions. I had no questions, but uh, I have this, I wrote a 1990s resume, you know, when I first uh, started looking for work. And my friend was like, no, 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 no. And she, because we've been friends for 24 years, she, she wrote all the success fights without even talking to me. And I didn't even know that that's what they were. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> But that's that's what we work on in the class, working on those success bites, because that's the, that's what I call the um, the base element in the unit of success. You need to have these success bites now, because that's what people are looking for. Again, they don't care what you did; they care how well you did it. And you have to be able to articulate. If you can't articulate, then you want to take a class like forty plus. Um, before, yes. Oh, I have a question with you. Yes, go ahead. That's okay. Right. So, uh, like, like many other speakers, you have you have now tweaked something in my head that is a, uh, you know, if you, if you talk to people about the LinkedIn, or you talk to people about how to answer talk to questions, you talk about resume, and people who are very good at it, giving you good information, you'll get sometimes some contradictory. Yeah. So here's sure. so here's my question yeah, that's what I was about time uh, time spent yeah. and your your plan for for activities. Right. So you said earlier in talking about the getting on a roll, right. building on no, momentum, I'm kind of building on little momentum. Right. Okay. We had a speaker actually here a couple weeks ago who which one I don't remember. But uh, was talking about the need to focus on your. You know, you've, you've got to hit the the. the there's some the heavy lifting tasks, uh, identifying your your success fights and, and perhaps oh, right, right. really your network, whatever it is. You've got to wait into that. And the line she said was, you know, I did my laundry today. That's not a okay. A perfectly valid example. That's like too far. You don't want to start too low. But there's a there's a balance here, right, between mm -hmm. identifying some some more easily achievable successes to get your momentum going, to build your confidence in, in your job search activities, versus the 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 large items that maybe are going to take you know days, weeks to continually work at, right, and you're so not going to see a, you're not going to see a success from it. How do you balance those two? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, Mary, I need you. This is, you're up, and I'm going to give you the cheat sheet here. Can I respond to that? Yes. We had someone in my job group who was out of work for two years, exquisitely skilled electronic, electrical engineer and computer guru, um, and we were all talking about being stuck. And so I suggested um, a part-time job three days a week and this has been an enormous um, uh, contribution to his momentum because now at least he has money coming in so the knuckles aren't as white as they used to be. And he's got structure. And it's not his dream job, but he's having fun at it. And it's the idea of creating this to have fun and to have positive energy going into that search. So that's that moment. Okay, we have this, this is, I want you to. Uh, Alright, so, so one of the things that I did, because in, in software development, you have to break what we do, work breakdown. So I might start out with, I have to do my resume. So what we're going to do at, as a group is, what sort of things I would put on my chart for doing a resume, okay? And so here are the categories that I have. I have 
you have to categorize things. So I have a number column. I number them um, because I'm a geek. I've been software for development for 20 some years. I number them one. 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, 1 .1. Yeah, I, I mean, that's me, but it's a very efficient way of doing it. All right, so let's do this. Let's say our, our yeah, this is this is our task. So, so we're gonna we're gonna do a resume. Um, yeah. What are what are some of the tasks I have to do for a resume? Yeah. I have to know, I have to get a list of all the companies where I've worked, right? The dates, uh, phone numbers, all sort of, you know, where I worked. So that's one. And not only do I have addresses, but I also have jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's two components in Address, that. Phone numbers, everything, yeah, supervisor all the name. supervisor name, when worked, etc. Because yes. I never wanted to have to do that again. <laughs> and this is what I talk about having the the infrastructure in place. We've done it once. We have it in place. You never have to do it again. Hopefully, it's, I hope you back up the uh, the hard drive. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Another reason to do that, if you do apply to a company that has government contracts and you have to have a security clearance, mm -hmm. they ask for all of that information going back to high school. So, mm -hmm. I, I just suggest a piece of homework <laughs> from this class. Everybody just go home and make a list, a database of every every place you've worked, names, numbers, locations, all of that. So, you won't get the headache. <laughs> so basically what what I did is yeah so so the task is we need to update our resume what are some of the things that I did well we have to write out our job history like we said we, then the second thing we have to decide is what's the best type of resume for me is it chronological is it functional is it a hybrid Personally, I'm biased towards chronological. Um, nowadays, if you have gaps, that's okay. They just want to know, you know, they want to do. I, I was listening to a YouTube on YouTube. One guy was saying, and he was a recruiter. He goes, if they give me a functional interview, I start off by saying, what are they trying to hide? And he said that is not the mentality you want them taking when they're looking at your resume. And so I, I love that piece of advice. So I, I was always, you know, I recommend chronological. Uh, then I want to start working on my success bites for each job. Now, I'm going to start with the most recent jobs, right? Because those are the most relevant. And I'm going to work my way down to the older jobs. Uh, I'm going to write, uh, oh, the profile. So how, how long is some, how long is somebody going to look at your resume before they make a decision on whether to give you an interview or not? Ten seconds. If you're lucky. Nine <laughs> Six is typically. So your profile, and we teach this in the class, your profile is that part, that upper third of your resume, and you want to make sure that that is, sells you and online. There's typically the job, and this is, by the way, how I customize my resume for 
for each job because I've gotten it down to a science now, right? After a while, if you get the process down, you can do it really easily. But I have a master resume that has every single success bite for every single job. And then I read the job description, circle the, the uh, keywords, and those success bites that fit in best for that the job I'm applying for, those are the ones I pick for that particular job. Because I have a master resume, I can do it, I can customize a resume in, a, in about an hour and have a really, do a really nice job. On my profile, I'm picking the three most valuable success bites related to that job. That, that's the first thing they're gonna read. They can make a decision in six seconds or not based on that and my keywords. And I make it easy for them, right? I know this is what they're trying to do, and they're gonna to get to my resume and they're like, oh, I like this, this guy knows what he's doing. And they're gonna hopefully give me the interview. Because that's all a, a resume is gonna do, right? It's gonna be an interview. And then the st second thing is you, you gotta do well in the interview. But, uh, so I do a job tile, a brief description of what I'm looking for, which by the way mirrors what they're, they're saying in their job description. And then I show like, my three most important success bites. Um, and then yeah, the keywords <laughs> around it. And I recommend that you do this for all of your tasks. <laughs> all your tasks, you know, you, because it'll start making you think about what you have to do. Now, psychologically, you know, the toughest thing about job search is that I'm still unemployed. But if you have a bunch of things like this, you can say, wow, I've really done a lot. I'm that much closer. And psychologically, you can see your progress. I would have the status. I might say, uh, you know, 100%, I would just check it off or 50%, like here, 67%, I would keep track and I would know how much farther along I am. So you get an idea of what you get. Ah, uh, yeah, this customized profile. Uh, so customized profile is too, too, uh, too, too. Oh, well, that's okay. But at any rate, we, th this gives you an idea. You break down each thing, again, when I got to the profile, I broke the profile down into the three things that I needed, four things I needed to do for the profile, and I just keep going on and on and on. And this will not only let you see what you've accomplished for the day and say, hey, did I deserve it? Do I deserve green acres at 8 o'clock? <laughs> Or, or do, do I need to work a little bit more? Because you, you actually have this product for that day. And now, again, there's going to come a time where your activities are going to change. Once you have your resume done, then you, you're going to do one for update resume. And the update resume is, again, when I, my, my template has nothing up on the profile, and has all my success bikes listed for the individual jobs. When I read that job description, I pull those three most important resumes from my entire, or success bikes from my entire resume, put them up on top, then I start deleting the other ones that don't matter, and voila, I can literally in an hour have a resume that is tailored to that particular job that I'm applying for. Does anybody, does that sound like a good idea for you? Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, it's, it's a very efficient way to do it. Uh, and that's what I hope. So really quickly, um, any more questions? We're running running over, but I hope this was sort of helpful. Yeah. Did you guys? Uh, any questions for me? No, because Mr. Ed is OK. Mr. Ed, you know, <laughs> it, it, Father knows best. All of those good classics. Uh, Some people working at home, I'll just say, put the TV on. It's like the background noise. It's pretty I, I, I know, and, and 
I mean, I, I, I literally told the woman, I said, unless Arnold the Pig is giving job search advice on this episode, you might want to consider turning it off. Because I said, you never know when somebody's going to call you like I did. And I said, that is not a favorable impression. And now, at this point, um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom.